Hi, my name is Raymond Jones. I am top 10% in Leak Code currently. I went from top 50% six months ago. My dash direction algorithm skills allow me to, or allowed me to skip to the on-site for my Amazon interview. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you how many leak code problems do you need to solve in order to get into Fang. The hard part about leak code is that nobody really tells you like how many that you need, right? We have lists like the Neat Code 150, the Grind 75, the Leak Code 150. And these are all really good lists, but like, what do you do if you finish those lists and you still aren't like that strong, you still are failing your interviews, right? How many more problems do you need to solve? What do you need to actually do? In order to get better, do you just give Neat Code $200 for his course? Or, you know, are there other things that you need? Or is there other things that you can do, right? And I'm gonna answer these questions. One is that problems go beyond just normal, easy, hard, right? There are easy problems that are very, very easy. There are hard problems that are very, 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 very hard. And there are also hard problems that are easy. There's, there is a spectrum of, of values there that aren't told by like these three, these three like buckets. And this is where we get ELO from, which you can probably, which is probably borrowed from the chess world or any kind of competitive game where you can assign actual numerical values to the difficulty of a problem based off of whether or not other people can solve those problems. Um, and this is why it's very, very important in order to understand this, that you do leak code contest, because what a leak code contest is going to do is it's going to tell you, Hey, I'm really bad at this, this portion or this topic, or just in general, I'm just really bad compared to like everybody else. And so when I, I have a lot of friends who work at Google, Amazon, Microsoft, I know like about what their skill level was. I can see like, you know, about what their skill level was when they got their offers. Now this was in 2020. I had several friends who were around 1400 to 1500 ELO who got FANG offers, right? They understood BFS, DFS. They understood like these core like concepts and they could implement them in the interview setting. And then they could, you know, of course pass. Now they weren't like, they didn't know every single pattern. They didn't know every single like type of problem, but they knew like good enough. And so if they got like the right set of questions for the, if they got the right proper set of questions, they could luckily, you know, kind of luck themselves into getting an offer, which is that like, if they studied BFS a lot, then they would just show up to the interview. They would get asked a BFS question and they would do well. But if they got asked like some kind of meeting rooms type problem, or, you know, maybe like a topological sort type of problem, then that that's, those are the ones they fail. This is why legal problems are really important to do because they're going to tell you what level and what skill level that you are performing at, whether you generally are bad or whether you're just bad at certain topics. It can be a very good starting point to like start gauging about that. And then once you know that, now you know how many problems you actually need to solve in order to improve, right? What topic problems do you need to work on? What what patterns you need to learn and things like that. And so for this ELO range of like, if you're doing legal contest right now and you're scoring within like the 1400, actually I would say around, if you're scoring at least 1500 ELO in the contest, you're probably good enough for FANG. The only difference is you need like maybe 10 interviews in order to like actually guarantee like, okay, you really should get an offer here. To summarize that is that we have a 1500 who is, they're good enough, but they need like a high volume of interviews. So the next step is, okay, a 1600, right? And I think a neat code, if you finish Nico's list, you'll be at around 1500. You'll, he'll give you the core concepts and core ideas, but the really thing is you just need to solve more problems. 1600, uh, you're going to have a great grasp of the concepts. I think you're probably going to be hovering around top 30% for compared to like all the competitive elite coders. Um, you're probably going to be missing like just some niche like problems or niche like topics but this is going to improve your rates a lot and you can go from like you know if i say like you're failing 10 interviews before you get an offer you're going to be failing five interviews before you get an offer and then the next one is 1700 700 i think you can do well in most of their interviews so they'll probably fail like three and they're going to have a great grasp of all the concepts they're going to be able to implement you know the algorithms like very quickly and these are all things that interviewers want to see these are all the things that like a dsa like portion is going to be like judging you on and then the holy grail is 1800 where any dsa interview question that they ask you is going to be easy most most of the DSA interview questions that they ask are trivial for to like all of these people because the algorithm problems that they're doing are using, you know, five different patterns and things like that. Overall, overall, to answer the real question of how many legal problems do you need to do is going to heavily, heavily depend on like what your score is, where you where you're currently at. And for this reason, I recommend doing contests. You do your Leco contests. There are a ton of actually algorithmic contests. Um, Code Chef, Pat Coder, Code Forces, Leco contests. And I'm sure there might be a couple more in there, but if you do just some of those contests, you're, what you're going to do is you're going to understand what things you need to work on. You're going to understand what your skill level is. And more importantly, you're going to understand, are you prepared enough to get into, to pass a FANG interview? That is it for, without contests, you're just going to be blindly, without contests, you're just going to be blindly hoping that you're good enough. That's not like, that's not really like a great, you know, decision, right? So for most people, they get like their, they get their FANG interview phone call and they get like very nervous and they kind of study two weeks beforehand and they fail because it's impossible really to, 
to learn all of this stuff. The real thing that you have to do is you need to practice, you need to practice consistently, and then you need to probably, I mean, ideally gauge where you're at so that you know, okay, I will fail this, or I will not fail this, and you'll have enough time to prep, essentially. Um, okay, uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, like and subscribe. I'll be making out more content like this in the future, trying to um, help you guys get a better understanding of all of this stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.